So I'm gonna make a video of um, what my front yard looks like right now. Um, I don't make a lot of videos of the front yard um, because a lot of the plants that I have growing in the front yard, um, in the front part of my house, they um, a lot of them are ornamentals and um, I just grow them for beauty and uh, yeah. But I do have some edible stuff in the front yard. Not a lot, but I do have some stuff that, that I grow for food. And so um, I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, what I have growing in the front yard. Um, yeah, so let me give you guys a little a little tour. Or let me show you. Um, also, I do have some of my cold sensitive stuff that I um, that are a little bit cold sensitive and that I'm growing like out, um, out of zone, um, like here, this planter, and I'll show you. Um, and they do pretty good there. It's like a little. They have like a little microclimate and they get protected. But um, so yeah, so this is my driveway. Um, and I have a planter here on my right, and then I have a little planter on my left, uh, and I have the cold stuff, the cold sensitive stuff like over here. It gets more protection. But um, the stuff out here is pretty cold hardy. Um, this time of the year is really pretty because um, my trees are in bloom. These are um, Palo Verde. This is the desert museum variety. They do really good out here in um, the high desert. They do really good for me. Um, I have another, you can see it peeking above the, the roof of the house. Up there, but I'll show you guys over there. But, um, but yeah, so as far as edibles over here, um, they're mostly ornamental. And the only thing that I have edible are my nopales. So I'll show you my nopales and they're kind of just, you know, in a line with my wall um, in this planter. So this is Mexican bird of paradise. It's been blooming for a few days now, maybe weeks, but really pretty little shrub, small tree, shrub or bush. Just depends on how you grow it and prune it. Here's a close up of this really pretty desert museum this thing um they're great for pollinators like they really attract lots of bees bumblebees like if you just stand here like you can hear a lot of hum like a lot of buzzing because it's covered in bees look at that big black bumblebee and then there's lots of honeybees so they're good um to get the pollinators um to your yard here we have um a nopal and this is really cool I, I really like nopales well nopales are one of my favorite um things to eat i don't know if i would i guess i would call it a vegetable we use it as a vegetable um we mix uh, it, uh we use it a lot in salads and a lot of mexican dishes like mexican food dishes um so yeah i i love them i grew up eating them um, you eat the little young pads like this one's perfect for eating you cut it clean the thorns off and Yeah, prepare it chop it uh, cook it and grill it Boil it. Uh, there's lots of ways to prepare it. But anyways, I use this as a vegetable and I, I love them We actually had a barbecue and we've already been eating a lot of um, the nopales so what I do is I remove, like I'm gonna remove this one and I've kept these two. So you kind of just keep the pads that you want um, for the structure of the, of the plant and then you re remove anything else you don't want and you eat it. And then also you get fruit. So this is a prickly pear fruit. One, two, three, we have three. It's still a very young plant, um, young plant. Um, so and there's different varieties the fruit is really good so you get fruit and you get like a vegetable so it's wonderful um so here's a bigger one here's a here's a pad and here's a fruit here's fruit fruit and then you have red varieties you have uh whites and i think you have like oranges so i've never had this one fruit for me so i don't know what variety I'm going to get but I'll find out so it's pretty exciting 
I have more here. Uh, I've had that one at the very end already produce fruit for me and they were red. They were really delicious. So I have two varieties. This is a different variety. You can even tell by the way it's, it grows like more upright, more vigor, a little bit shorter. So those um, I could have removed and eaten, um, used them for food, but I kept them because I do want um, the plant to get taller, maybe a little bit above the wall to give me a little bit more um, privacy. Um, so that's how I'm growing them. I'm growing them for privacy, for like a vegetable, for food, obviously, and the fruits. Another bird of paradise. Mexican. I'm pretty sure it's uh, a Mexican bird of paradise. I think that's what it's called. Really pretty. You can grow this as a little small tree. Uh, you can prune it. Um, and keep it short and bushy, um, shrub, tree, small tree, whatever, whatever you like. Look at that tree. It's really pretty. Let's see, I have another ball here, and I removed that pad. You can just stick that pad in the ground, and it'll grow. They're really easy to propagate. Um, you can cut the pad in half or thirds and stick them in the ground and they grow. You can stick the whole pad. Normally I take the whole pad and, and bury it like halfway or a third of the way and it'll just start growing. Um, they're not picky. They grow really well here in my zone 8B in the high desert in just regular soil. This one I've had fr uh, fruit from. They're red. And so yeah, so they're here. Here it is, it just lines the driveway. Really pretty blooms. So let me show you guys. I'll show you guys that. Uh, probably now. Um, let's see. We mostly have like another tree. Uh, we have another desert museum this is the oldest one I, this is one of the first trees i put in when i bought the house the house didn't have any plants it was just the house and dirt soil um it had no plants it only had one big pine tree you can see that it had one big pine tree in the back in the front of the house on the side that's it. There was nothing growing here other than that huge pine tree. And now we have, and everything else I've put in the ground. So we have another desert museum. We have some sort of, so it's like a little desert um, kind of theme. I have cactus and, um, suc uh, are these, um, they're like, yeah, cactus, succulents, agaves, stuff like that. The cactus bloom really pretty. I have more Texas Ranger three in the front. Those are some branches I pruned. I gotta get them in the trash. Um, the Texas Ranger is really pretty. They got that blue, silvery blue color. And then you get this beautiful like lavender uh, bloom. They get covered. They just look like lavender ball, like lavender little balls of little lavender shrubs, little bushes covered in lavender color blooms. I think in the fall. So, we'll have some color in the fall. This one's really pretty. I don't know what it's called. I forgot. It's got a pretty yellow bloom. It's covered it in blossoms and buds. It's going to keep blooming for a little bit. This one's pretty. They haven't opened yet. It's kind of early. As the day gets hotter, it'll open some more blooms. This one's a really pretty pink. I have a lot of yellows. It's not open yet. It's early in the morning probably open up later they're just starting to open yeah they're just starting to open but that really pretty purple with the yellow looks really pretty there's like a bee in there yep there is there's another tree I have a blue agave this is a different type of cactus so different types of cactus this one blooms really pretty too but they're not open yet 
they're kind of yellow but a little bit more peachy in color I think that's a um, what is it called a Peruvian Peruvian apple cactus so it, it does produce like a prickly pear type of fruit like a round it hasn't produced for me yet but I'm pretty sure it does I've done a little bit of research um, and yeah over there I just have more more cactus same variety I think this is the big pine tree I was telling you guys about that was here huge it's really big really 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 big but it provides some shade up here so this is the front of my house this tree is like leaning over a little bit because once the sun yeah look at some some blooms here i think yeah they're just opening yeah cactus can be really pretty this time of the year That's it. Let me show you guys how the little, um, the, some of my um, other stuff did over the winter. So I have a Washington navel. I bought this in the fall. I planted it in this container in the fall. It did really good. It had um, no protection. No protection. And it did great. Well, it did, I didn't do anything. Like, it was just left there, out here. So it did have some a little protection. Like, you can't just leave it in the middle of, like, an open, like, backyard. It does have the house. So there is radiating heat coming from the house, and then there's an overhang. Um, so I, uh, what I mean in no protection is, like, I didn't cover it or put Christmas lights on it or, um, like, stuff like that. But I did put it in a sheltered area. But so it was just left here just like this um, this one was covered this is a guava a pink tropical pink guava this one was left out here but I did put a frost cloth on it so this one did have some some additional protection but it did great I don't know if I'm gonna get guavas this year but at least it kept most of its leaves and um, its size so the last year it um, suffered major dieback in my back porch so I guess it gets a lot colder back there um, it didn't have a frost cloth and it did die back like quite a quite a bit like it had to regrow a lot so it doesn't have to do that this year it looks a lot better it did way better so that frost cloth really helped um, Texas Ranger, Texas Ranger, Texas Ranger, the little bushes, the little silvery bushes. And then tucked in between, I have a dwarf um, Meyer lemon. It was left just like that. No protection. It didn't have any dieback. It had a, a few yellow leaves. And that's about it. But it did bloom and it's not holding on to anything so it has no lemons it did bloom heavy it always blooms heavy but um i've had these trees for maybe seven years six seven years i'm thinking i have to go back and look at my videos but um they are on their dwarfs so they must be on flying dragon because they're very very small um so i'm think i'm guessing i don't know for sure but i'm pretty sure that the rootstock is flying dragon now since i've had them i've only had one or two years they were considered good like i had like four lemons or three or four lemons on each of the trees and then that's about it most years it blooms heavy and then drops all its fruit i don't know maybe i'm doing something wrong with fertilizing maybe they're not getting enough sun i don't know maybe i'm thinking it's my fertilizing uh, maybe I'm not fertilizing enough because I know citrus are heavy feeders but I don't know and they were in containers for most of the time I've had them this is they've been in the ground for one full year this is the second year but they look pretty so I'm hoping they're just adjusting to the new location and they're gonna give me lots of lemons I'm gonna let them stay for about three years and then 
they're gonna have to leave if they don't produce and replace them with something else. It's just a little crown of thorns my mom gifted me. There is a savila, what, a, what is it, a aloe vera? Uh, it's tucked in there, it needs to come out and get some more sun. And exactly the same thing with that one. Another Meyer lemon, I have two, I bought two. Um, same exact thing. They act and behave the same. Um, but yeah, I think it's time for fertilizing. I did fertilize already in like the spring. There's another aloe vera here. I should, get, I should move it to get more sun. I kind of tuck them in in the winter because um, they're a little cold sensitive. So I kind of tuck them in behind the Texas Ranger. And then here we have a bar's lime, bear's lime, bear's lime. Yeah, so th that was uh, by in the fall, I believe, and put in there. Again, this didn't have any protection, just the house, the overhang of the house and the wall and the radiant heat. That, that's about it. No, no, um, nothing else. That's it, just the location. It didn't suffer, not even yellowing of the leaves. So, great. I might put that in the ground. If these don't get it together, I might remove them and put something like that in. Now these are dwarf, this is a semi-dwarf, so it'll be bigger. Um, here's another orange. Same, I got it in the fall. This is the Valencia orange. And then um, I have these two I've had for a while. Um, this is a lemon. Okay, no additional protection, no frost cloth, no lights, no nothing, um, just the house. Um, this is a lemon guava. I've had it for maybe this is going on its second year. Um, I was growing it in the backyard, in the porch. It's been moved a couple times. Um, last winter it suffered a lot. A lot of dieback it had to regrow and so I got nothing no fruit um, so I moved it to this location and this winter it didn't suffer any cold damage nothing it didn't drop a leaf it didn't suffer at all so again this location is really good for some of my my uh, cold sensitive stuff um, you can see like my doors right there in my garage so it's like a little corner. Um, but um, it's never fruited for me. It's never looked this good because it put on a lot of new growth. It's nice and green and bushy. And very exciting thing is it's covered in little blooms, like little buds. So it's going to bloom. I think it's going to fruit for me this year. But like you see, oops. See those little buds everywhere, look. So I'm excited. I'm finally gonna get lemon guavas. I've had them before, but I've never had my little um, shrub fruit for me. So I'm excited. So this is where it's gonna live for a long time because it's happy here. And then right next to it, it's a dwarf Mexican key lime this one's maybe around the same time maybe three years um, and it didn't have a frost cloth they were left here they're, they're just they grow here year-round just like that under my overhead in this planter that lines my driveway um, and it never suffers cold damage and it's one of the um, it's one of the more cold sensitive citrus varieties, this is the Mexican key lime. And so um, I'm not having any trouble with it, it here. It is a dwarf, so it's in a pot, so it's perfect for container growing. Um, it has bloomed before, but it always drops the fruit. So I've never had um, it mature any key limes for me so that I can, I've never harvested any key limes. So I'm thinking this might be the year that I get key limes because that's pretty big like they never get that big so it's it's they're they're a lot bigger than they've ever been 
So I think it's gonna hold on to them. You see that? They've never been that big. And there's more here. There's two more here. So it's not gonna be a huge crop, but I'm happy that I'm gonna get some, hopefully. I hope it doesn't drop them. There's a few blooms here still, little, little tiny blooms. You see that? So it's, it's they're kind of hidden because they're green. But I think this is going to be the year. I think it's gonna be the year that the key lime finally fruits, Mexican key lime finally fruits and the, and the lemon guava. Um, so the only thing I put a frost cloth on, uh, the only thing that got a frost cloth little frost jacket was the guava. I find that the guava is a lot more cold hardy than the citrus varieties in this lemon guava. So that's it. Um, yeah, the citrus did great here. And um, that's it, you guys. The citrus do really good here. So this is where they're gonna stay, some of the cold, uh, some of the more cold sensitive stuff. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that I will, I will talk to you guys later. I will, I will, in the next video, look at those little buds. I wonder how they, what they look like when they're open, like the flowers. It'll be interesting to see if they resemble some of the, um, the other guava varieties, like the, the pinks, the more tropical ones. Yeah, so... So, um, yeah, this one's doing great. So now I know I can grow this um, variety of guava in my, um, in my planter in the front yard with very little, with almost no care, like no um, worries of cold to damage. Oh, look, there's more blooms. All right, gotta go. Bye.